Romans 12, verse 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your responsibility or reasonable service. Amen. Verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your thoughts, your mind. Now, your mind is the holder of all your thoughts. It's the location. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. He says, not conforming to the ways of worldliness, but escaping its influence by renewing your thoughts that influence emotional desires. And you're going to keep hearing me speak about emotional desires because those are deadly. Ungodly emotional desires are destroying the body of Christ. Too much influence in there. Too much me, myself, and I's. Influencing. What do you want to do? Not conform to the ways of worldliness, but, but escaping its influence by renewing your thoughts that influence emotional desires that promote choices out of God's time, out of God's favor, and out of God's freedom. These are three levels. There are three levels of the kingdom freedom. He said good, acceptable, and perfect. Those are freedom levels. There's the good, there's the acceptable, and there's the perfect. Three levels of kingdom freedom, all based on eight attributes of freedom. And we're going to talk about some of these tonight. Eight meaning new beginnings. Would you turn to Hosea 4? There are certain ones we don't need to talk about. We know worship is essential. Amen. Without God's presence, you ain't nothing. I don't care if you can memorize the Bible inside and out and the page numbers. Without the presence of God, you're nothing. You're just throwing seeds. That's it. Without the anointing of Christ Jesus back in you, we're nothing. Amen. That's where a lot of people know the word and they're still doing stupid stuff. Because they're not free. They're in demon management instead of freedom. Amen? And one thing we don't want to do is fall back into management. Many people have fallen from freedom state to management state. And it's because they haven't set something straight yet. Hosea 4, 6, would you read it with me? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. This is revelation knowledge. Because you've rejected the knowledge from the Lord... I also reject you from being a priest for me. And that's someone that's close to God. Because you have forgotten the law or the word of your God, I will also forget your children. That means a curse comes down the family line. My people are destroyed for lack of revelation knowledge. This is pertaining to eternal living and kingdom principles. Knowledge that is understood is truth see people can read the word of God and not because there's knowledge in here but not understand it then it's really not truth and it makes it different the Bible says truth sets us free so you must have understanding in these areas of the word of God amen truth is knowledge you know again only with understanding but knowledge without understanding is not truth. So the first thing that we must desire is revelation knowledge by seeking out the truth. You know, we have to finally get to a point where, you know what, I, I want the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. Amen. At one time we might have been seekers of truth and then we gave up. We want revelation knowledge from God. We want spiritual understanding. These things, we must have revelation. Those are things that also come from God. Knowledge. Knowledge. 
The word of God is knowledge. Amen. We don't need worldly knowledge. We got enough of that. People go to college and get all the worldly knowledge they want, but they're not free. It's all under the Babylonian system anyways. So the first thing we need to desire is for knowledge, revelation knowledge, by seeking out the truth. Just think if everybody, if that would have been the number one thing that every believer would have done, they wouldn't have gone out and got and received the curse. Amen? They would have sought out the truth. They would have bypassed the doctor and gone to the true doctor, Jesus, the throne. They wouldn't have been bound in fear. In John 15, verse 5. I am the vine and you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can't do anything. If anyone does not abide in me, he's cast out as a branch and is withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you abide in me and my what? Words, my knowledge abide in you. You will ask what you desire because your desires are no longer from the fallen state of being, but they're from the Holy Spirit in God's time, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my what? Disciples. As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. Wow. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Abide in Jesus, in his words. Abide in his promises, in his covenant. Abide in his presence. Abide. Live. Let's go to verse 18. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you are of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they keep my word, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin. But now they have no excuse for their sins. He who hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin. Now they have seen and also hated both me and my father. But this has happened that the word might be fulfilled, which is written in their law. They hated me without a what? A cause. But when the helper comes, whom I will send to you from the father, the spirit of truth, who proceeds from the father, he will testify of me. So the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Father. And you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. Wow. Abide in the Spirit of the Father. That's why it's so important about getting baptized in the Holy Spirit. Many people keep avoiding it. They don't believe in the gifts of the Spirit or the tongues and all. They don't, they're just ignoring it. Shame on them. Because they're missing God's power and God's freedom. Amen? So the second thing, so the first thing we talked about is desire the revelation knowledge by seeking out the truth. The second thing is abide. You must have a desire to abide. You must abide. You must live in that arena. Abide. Dwell. Interact. With Jesus and the Holy Spirit and the Father. That's why the word says acknowledge him in all of your ways. Amen. First Thessalonians 4, verse 1. If 
Finally, then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more just as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, in other words, your separation from the world, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each one of you should know how to possess his own vessel or temple or body in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but to what? Holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Father. But concerning brother in love, you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another, and indeed you do so toward all brethren who are in all Macedonia. But you, we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more, and that you also aspire to lead a quiet life Mind your own beeswax and work out your own salvation. <laughs> work with your hands as we commanded you, commanded you that you may walk properly toward those who are outside and that you may be lacking what? Nothing. Lacking nothing. Sanctification is the third attribute that is vitally important. It's separation from worldly influence. Past, present, and future. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 17. Therefore, come out from what? Among them and be separate or sanctified, says the Lord. And don't touch what's unclean, either with your hands, with your thoughts, or with your desires, your heart. And I will receive you, and I'll be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Come out from among them, avoiding emotional desires that cause untimely decisions. Untimely decisions. Presumptuous sin. A lot of people walk in assumption. We must maintain an attitude of holiness and obedience. It's still under sanctification number three. First Corinthians 9, 26. Therefore, I run thus not with uncertainty, which means assumption. Thus I fight, not as one who beats the air, but I do what? Oh, snap. Discipline. I what? Discipline my body. That means your desires, your mind, your thoughts. You discipline. And bring it into subjection, lest when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. Not with assumption. Discipline is the fourth thing. Discipline is a, uh, I'm going to throw this out there. It's a high level, a high, it, it, it's, a, it's a place of high level disconnect. Discipline. You reach a place of high level disconnect from Unhealthy emotions, habits, and desires. Discipline. Why? Because you're disconnected from them. You have disciplined yourself to get disconnected from them. So no matter what comes against you in any way whatsoever, you overcome it. Why? Because you're building an area where revelation, understanding, or knowledge is the number one thing. Why? Because if you do that, you will always know the truth. Always. So discipline is the fourth thing. It's essential. 
Go to Proverbs 15, verse 9. Well, let me tell you, bad habits will entice demons to come back. In fact, the Bible tells it. When they leave a, 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 a body, they come back, what? With seven more, trying to re-enter that person, even though it's been delivered and healed. That's why people get sick over and over again. If you've been freed from something, next thing you know, boom, there's, there, that's back again. The way of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but he loves him who follows righteousness. Now, Harsh discipline is for him who forsakes the way. And he who hates correction will what? Die. Hell and destruction are before the Lord. So how much more the hearts of the sons of men. Hmm. Wow. A scoffer does not love one who corrects him. Nor will he go to the wise. Harsh discipline forsakes the way. Those that hate correction and direction will die. The heart is the core of all desire. Amen? So we've got to come to that place where we're constantly in a place of discipline. Discipline. In fact, the word disciple is involved in discipline. A disciple is disciplined. Proverbs 23. Verse 1. So you are looking for correction and direction from the Lord and sometimes conviction. Don't wait for it to come. Look for it. Lord, convict me. Show me what I'm doing that's stupid. Expose my desires that are unhealthy. When you sit down and eat with a ruler or anyone, consider carefully what's before you. And put a knife to your throat if you are a man given to appetite. Ooh. If you are a man given to, I want to say, gullible. If you are gullible. Do not desire his delicacies, for they are, de what, deceptive food. He's not talking physically, he's talking spiritually. Do not overwork to be rich because of your own understanding cease. Will you set your eyes on that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away like an eagle toward heaven. Do not eat the bread of a miser, an evil eye. I call it a compromiser nor desire his delicacies. For as he thinks in his heart, so he is. As a man thinks, so he is. So why do you think the enemy wants to play with your thoughts? Wants to convince you and deceive you. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. And the more so you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. Don't speak in the hearing of a fool, for he will despise your, the wisdom of your words. Man that is gullible, in other words, he leans toward assumption, avoiding what they have learned. They will accept deceptive and percep per, uh, per false perceptions, false desires and dreams, and come into a false delusional future. Man, when we were out there using and all kinds of drinking and partying. Oh, man, we can't. everybody had a dream. Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Then they have two nickels to rub together. I was all a lie and delusion. And the enemy puts people in the state of that way. Amen? Do not partake, approve, or compromise or justify your desire of reasoning because of what you agree with or partake with or what you eat, you will become and you will contaminate your heart, the core of all desires. It will affect your thoughts and everything else. Be careful what you touch and agree with. Amen? Be careful what you partake in. In other words, everybody's got a story. Not every story is true. Look at the media. They lie like crazy. The people are believing them. 
That's deceptive food. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 13. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which with the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing what? Spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them because they are what? Spiritually discerned. Spiritual discernment is number five. We will need spiritual discernment. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord or the thoughts of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So in this spiritual discernment, it comes by aligning with the mind or the thoughts and words of Christ Jesus, being filled with his spirit. We are aligning with what he says. That is called spiritual discernment. Proverbs 2, verse 1. My son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, if you cry out for discernment and lift up your voice for understanding, if you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the reverence or the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge, revelation knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the path of the justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity, and every good path. Ooh. When wisdom enters your heart and knowledge is pleasant to your soul, discretion will preserve you or discernment. Understanding will keep you to deliver you from the way of evil, from the man who speaks perverse things, and from those who leave the paths of uprightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice in doing evil and delight in perversity of the wicked, whose ways are crooked and who are devious in their paths, to deliver you from the immoral woman or man, from the seductress who flatters with their words, who forsakes their companion of their youth and forgets the covenant of their God. Their house leads down to death and their paths to the dead. None go to them that go to them return, nor do they regain the paths of life. So you may walk in the way of goodness and keep the paths of righteousness, for the upright will dwell in the land and the blameless will remain in it. But the wicked will be cut off from the earth and the unfaithful will be uprooted from it. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, lust of self, seductress, seducing, Lustful and perverse of spirits that influence Christians to break covenant and depart from the Lord. That is also known as addictive desire. Addictive desires of the flesh. Galatians 5, 16. I say then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so you do not do the things that you wish or desire, according to the flesh. But if you are led by the Spirit of God, you're not under the law of sin and death. Now, here it is. Here are the works of the flesh, which are evident. Which are what? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, Hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, 
that those who what? Practice such things will not inherit eternal life. So if you die in that condition, you don't go home. Does everybody get it? Well, what about, each, what about once saved, always saved? That's a lie. No such thing. That's why the Bible says work out your salvation. Work it out. Amen? Repent. Turn from it. Hallelujah. Works of the worldly flesh induced by rebellious desires and provoked by witchcraft. And, of course, demonic presence. See, once you begin to agree with something, to do something, that demon shows up. Because he's first throwing out darts. And then once you agree with it, he can get. He's got access. Oh, hallelujah. First Peter chapter 5, verse 5. Likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. That doesn't mean age. It means more mature. Submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another. That means respect one another. And be clothed with what? Humility. For God will resist or reject the proud. But God gives grace his plan to the humble so what do you think the sixth one is humble for those who think anything else therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of god that he may exalt you in due time casting all your care upon him not on your neighbor on him for he cares for you and be what sober which means what alert be vigilant, which means consistent. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about a, like a roaring lion, seeking whom he can mislead, devour, get out of position. Amen? Humble. Well, you can't be humble without rejecting pride. Amen? It's associated with denying yourself. Go to Matthew 16, 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him what? Deny himself. Take up his cross. That means you got to fight and follow. Remember, what's the word believe mean? To follow. Don't tell me you're a believer if you ain't a follower. For everyone who desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will what? Will find it. Yes. Praise God. Would you turn to Matthew 7, verse 24. First one he, we talked about was desiring revelation knowledge. The second one was to abide. The third one was sanctification. Amen. The fourth one was discipline. The fifth one is spiritual discernment. The sixth one is humble, humility. Verse 24. Matthew 7, 24. That's therefore whoever what? Whoever what? He did not say listen. I want to share with you about hearing since we need to hear it multiple times. Hearing, hearing, if you're not a person that takes notes in teaching, you're not a hearer, you're only a listener, and you're prideful. Hearing, hearing, hearing means you want to teach what you hear. You want to give what you hear. Does everybody get it? You are hearing, in other words, what you hear. See, listen, look at this, it says, 
Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, that means he's a doer. He puts it into practice. Oh, I'm okay. I got it. Yeah, right. Tell Jesus that. Therefore, whoever hears, not listens. See, because a lot of people listen. You know what they do? When you talk to them, they go, yeah, 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 I got it. I got it. Yeah, don't worry about it. I got it. And they don't do it. They do the same stupid stuff over and over and over. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine, takes notes and teaching, puts it into practice and does them, I will liken him to be a wise man who built his house on the rock. We call that the anointing. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on their house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like in a foolish man who built his house on the sand. A sand and rock is the foundation, isn't it? Right. One is solid, one isn't. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was the fall. Why do you think people fall? Amen? Why do you think they make wrong choices? So seven is hear and doer. You must be a hearer and put it into practice, not a listener. Why? Because we want a solid foundation, not a shaky one. We don't want to be, we want to be stable, not unstable. We don't want to change. We want to stay the same. We don't want to be misled. We want to be committed all the way through. And I'm going to close at 1 Corinthians 3, verse 9. For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, you are God's building. According to the plan of God, or grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed to how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay that, that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Let no one deceive himself. If any among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. Therefore, let no one boast in men, for all things are yours. Now, we talked about a solid foundation and a shaky foundation. All of this is in conclusion in number eight, which is to build a routine. Does everybody get it? Number eight is routine. That's what's happening. Everything that was given to us is to establish a routine. Just like when you come to the discipleship house, the first thing that you're learning is the discipleship card, the daily card. It's to help build a routine. A routine. It's not a ritual. It's a routine. Amen? And that routine brings you a foundation. If you'll maintain this routine, how do you, how do you maintain a foundation? You've got to have a routine. Amen. If you don't have a routine, you're not going to maintain a foundation. You'll be unstable, you'll drift, you'll be easily misled, and you'll speak things out of your mouth you wish you wouldn't have. Hello? You won't touch, and then you, you won't touch and agree with things. You'll discern things before they get to you. 
You know they're out there. They're lurking to get you. The Bible tells us that daily the powers of darkness set a trap and snare for us. But examine yourself. Are you following the routine God has given you? Or are you compromising it? See, that determines what level you want to be in is freedom. Many people are 50-50. 50% management, 50% free. Some people are less than that. It's up to us. It's our responsibility. Amen? To maintain the routine God's given us so we can maintain a foundation. If we're going to compromise it, there's trouble. And you'll be tempted to compromise it every day. Believe me, people skip prayer. They know it. Two days later, everybody else knows it. Amen? You'll know them by their desires and their choices. Well, why didn't you do this? Why did you do that? Why? No, you're not following routine. It's that simple. Follow the routine, you maintain a solid foundation. Don't follow the routine, you're shaky. Amen? Praise God. Lord, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that the seed and the word that you've imparted in us tonight will be protected by the anointing and grow and bear fruit and bring to remembrance as our minds continue to reset every single day through the routine of maintaining the foundation you've given us. Help us, Lord. Quicken us and convict us when we begin to compromise those things so that we may fulfill and reach a level of freedom that brings glory to your name. In Jesus' name. Everybody say amen.